Hey guys, I'm Chad Hoover. Welcome to today's video where I'm going to talk to you about three or four things you can do to improve casting in high winds. All right, so guys, let's face it. Certain times of the year, wind is just more of a problem. Certain times of the year, wind is more prevalent. When you're coming out of winter into spring, you're going to get all kinds of frontal systems, right? You're going to get some in the summer and other times of year, but really that time when you're really excited, you've been at home, it's been too cold to fish for a lot of folks, and you get back out there, you're jacked up, and then it's windy. Here's how you can avoid some frustration when it comes to casting on windy days. The number one obvious, most obvious thing to do is go with a little bit heavier lure, okay? You can get away with a heavier lure when it's windy, but you can still cast incorrectly. And a lot of times what happens is the wind just identifies a flaw in your cast. So the things that I'm going to talk about here are things you're going to really want to focus on for casting in general, but it just sticks out way more when you're casting in wind. So let's talk about it. First and foremost, when you set your reel up for fishing, you're gonna set your centrifugal up to where you're gonna get the maximum casting distance, but you don't get a backlash at the beginning of the cast, okay? I'll talk more about that in another video. And then you, if you're starting to get backlashes at the end of the cast, you're gonna, lose your, you're gonna use your friction knob. Most people know the old trick, take your lure, reel it to where it's about six inches from the end of the rod, tighten that friction knob up, engage the gear, loosen it up, and when that lure first starts to move, that's your starting point. It's a really small, easy tip again. Put that lure out there, let it hang about, let it dangle about a foot, click the spool, and when it starts to, you know, and then just back your knob up until it just starts to move. That's your starting point, and then you can back it off a little bit at a time. You really wanna make sure your reel's set up correctly. If your reel's not set up correctly, you're probably gonna get backlashes all the time, but you're definitely gonna get backlashes when it's windy out. Now, the big key for me, and the thing that I can tell you that you can, you can focus on the most that's gonna save frustration in the wind is to get away from an overhand cast and go to more of a sidearm cast. And if you go to a sidearm cast, for one, your lure's gonna stay lower, it's gonna have less time in flight, so it's gonna hit the water quicker. You're gonna have to just uh, adjust your expectations of how far you're going to cast in some cases, but not necessarily. But the big thing is load the rod. And I see a lot of people do sling casts where they just use the, the weight of the lure to cast. What you really should do is go back and load the rod. And it's one mov movement you go back. It's almost like, imagine you have a donut on your thumb and you're going back to keep that donut from falling off. And then you're throwing that donut at what you want. So imagine you're trying to throw a donut into a bucket. That's important for two reasons. One, when you go back, you're gonna load that rod like you've got that donut on your finger, but you don't want it to fall off. So you load that rod and then you snap that cast off, keeping it sidearm or you know, kind of over in this range over here. You don't wanna go straight vertical and you definitely wanna go sidearm. The higher up you go, a little bit more distance because you get a little bit more time in flight, but go as sidearm as you can go. Now, here's what's really important and why that donut on the finger thing is, a, is, is also important. When you come around and you make that cast, you wanna follow that lure to the water. Now there's a reason you wanna follow the lure to the water. The number one reason you get a backlash, not just in high winds, is that you make a cast and as that lure is flying through the air, you start to raise your rod tip. When you start to raise your rod tip, here's the science of why you get a backlash. This spool is spinning at a certain speed. This line is going out at that same speed. As soon as you increase the friction across your guides, the lure's still going the same speed. The line was going out at one speed, but you increase the friction and now the spool is spinning faster than the line is going out. So again, I'm going to demonstrate this for you. This is again, very important when you're fishing in high winds, but this is something that is super important regardless of what you're fishing. And it's even as important for an overhand cast. And I'm going to do a twofer. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to do it overhand, even though this is a high wind video. When you make your cast, make it overhand, follow that lure to the water, skim that spool with your thumb. Now, here's the big one. Double down on paying attention right now. Here is the big one. When you make a arcing cast, like a rainbow, okay? Let me demonstrate a crappy cast, and I'm gonna show you, last but not least, one of the number one reasons people get backlash, and definitely the number one reason that they get backlash during high winds. Watch this. I'm gonna make the old rainbow cast. I'm gonna cast the lure up in the air, 
when that line hits the water, I've got a big swoop in my line. And when I start reeling, I am reeling slack up onto my spool. When you have line at different um, tightnesses and slack on your spool, as soon as you hit one of those spots where that first set of line is really tight, but the line underneath it, that the line that you reeled on first is loose, it's immediately going to create an overrun situation. Your spool is going to speed up because it now has less friction and you're going to get a backlash. So when you make a cast, you want to be in contact with that lure all the way through the cast. I'm going to demonstrate this again. And when you're in contact with that lure all the way through the cast, it's super critical that you stay in contact with it on high wind situation like the situation we're in right now. All right. So let me get this crap off of here and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. All right. So you're going to make your cast, you're going to load the rod, you're going to follow it to the water, and as soon as it hits, you're going to engage that lure and you're going to start reeling. Now, you're going to get that line stacked on that spool nice and clean. You're going to get it stacked on there with a lot of tension, and you're going to avoid reeling that slack on there. Now, if you catch yourself in a scenario where you made that cast, and you're like, oh, I just got a bunch of slack in my line, like Chad said, here's a tip. Take your finger and put it over the worm gear, and load that line as you're reeling it on and you're faking that there's friction on there until you get back in contact with your lure and then finish your retrieve. So one more time guys, don't reel slack onto your spool. This is important with a bait caster. It's also equally important. Actually, the reason you get wind knots with a spinning rod is because of this. So make a laser beam cast. Be ready to fish the lure as soon as it hits the water because you need to do that in high winds anyway. Set your, your reel up properly Go ahead and tighten that friction knob up a little bit and maybe go down one setting on your centrifugal, which means put one more centrifugal back in play to help you out. It's okay to really put those training wheels on during a high wind situation. Alter your expectations, but the three keys for me is keep your cast low, don't reel up slack, because you probably got the backlash two casts from now from the slack you reeled up two casts ago, so don't reel up slack and then follow that lure to the water. Again, if you raise that rod tip as that lure's flying out, there's your backlash. So guys, that's as simple as it is. I'll do another video to tell you how easy it is to get these backlashes out, but the best way to get a backlash out is to not get one. They say in the South that a ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So avoid backlashes, learn to cast sidearm and load your rod like you're chucking that donut, set your reel up properly, you'll avoid the frustration of getting backlashes and giving up on a windy day because there's two reasons that windy days produce. Because everybody that didn't watch this video is headed home because they're frustrated and they're going to watch football or do something different. And the feed really gets fired up a lot of times when that wind kicks up. So you're gonna catch bigger bass, you're gonna have less people out there fishing, learn how to cast in the wind, you'll catch more fish, you'll get less frustrated, and you'll have more fun. Because after all, fun is really what it's all about. Guys, I hope you liked this video. If you did, smash that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. Turn on that notifications bell, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Love y'all.